Okay, thank you. Um, so just quickly, I wanted to uh, mention just a thing about the sighting technique. And I think you guys have been getting it as far as measuring proportionally, but it really, it, it seems like such a simple thing, but I can't stress enough over, uh, over the course of your drawing um, through the rest of your life, basically, this, this is a really invaluable technique for you know, taking the guessing out of drawing and, um, and actually getting proportional uh, accurate drawings when that's what you're trying to do. Um, but basically, you know, things like another useful tool for the sighting technique are establishing things like when you're drawing a, a, a um, whether it's a still life or a fig, human figure, it's like how are the angles presented to you? Like if I was to start to draw this uh, on my paper, how do I get the right angle that these boxes are sitting at? They're not like the the front of this um, this uh, base here is kind of facing me, but these are are kind of receding away from me and towards each other. So it's just a simple technique where you, you know, you extend your arm just like you would with the um, sighting technique where you close one eye, extend your arm. And instead of looking for proportion, what I'm looking for is the angle. And what I can see is I'm lining it up with the bottom of that, that brown box. And what you do is just simply um, try to hold your wrist in that same position and kind of come over and place it directly where you want to place it on the paper. So it's like I have from here to here, it might shift a little bit, but it's giving me a pretty accurate description of that angle. So I can now, you know, make a mark that will show me where that is. And I can also then come see and you'll find it's going to be almost exactly the same for the top since they're, they're, um, pretty close to me. So that's sort of a good starting point. And to find the, um, uh, let's see, like the, the width of that box, then I can kind of use the sighting technique and measure the height of the, the face of it and then compare that to uh, the width of it. And it seems like it's about one, two, maybe like two and a half um, heights. Like if I took two and a half of these, it would get me to where uh, the end of that box proportionally would be. So I know I would need to make it um, about a little bit longer. So it would end up being about here. So now I've used the sighting technique to get an accurate depiction of where this box is, the angle it's sitting at, as well as its um, relative proportion. And then quickly, I can find the angle, the way it's receding away from me here, and then come over, and I have a good, pretty good indication of where that would be. So right away, I have um, a pretty solid description of, of that box in space and how we're seeing it. Um, So quickly then with the, the red box next to it, I can do the same thing. I know that it's, I can make one of those sort of, uh, it's called a plumb line. Anytime you kind of use a, a line that's straight vertical to try and establish the um, position of something. And the other thing I can do is, is the red box seems slightly higher than the brown box. So I know it's gonna start somewhere around here. So I'll make a little notation there. And then I'm going to look for the angle that the red box is receding away from me at and move over, kind of trying to hold my uh, position as best I can. And I know that angle is going to be, let me check that again, something about like this relative to the box next to it. Yes. So I have a good sort of start for that. I know I can kind of look at the bottom and I also see that the red box is slightly larger. So it comes down a little bit below that brown box there. And then I can double check and look at the bottom of that red, red box here and come over 
and I've got a good kind of indication of where that should be. So quickly now, I also want to see where um, the width of that red box here compared to say the brown box. And it seems to be about half the length of that. So it would be about here. So it's really once you have the more things you, you start establishing on the page, the, the actually the easier it gets because you have more and more to sort of compare relative proportions to. So it, it actually, the, the main thing is, is getting sort of the first items down loosely and then you can correct them as you go. But it's mainly getting, um, starting to get things blocked in. So now I'm gonna quickly check the proportion of the left side of that box and I can notice it appears slightly because it's turned slightly narrower than this side. So I'm going to make a little note that it's slightly smaller so it'll come almost to the edge of the page here. The other thing you'll notice um, in, in sort of smaller still lives like this, a really fast way um, to get correct sort of perspective without using sort of formal perspective is on any kind of small objects like these, lines across from each other are gonna be pretty close to parallel to each other. So you'll notice once you get one angle, you can pretty much guess what the angle at the top is for anything that's sort of at this sort of um, close up view. So then just quickly what you could do for getting that glass on there and using the, the sighting technique, that clear glass, is a good, anytime you're drawing something square like this and you wanna find the center, uh, use sort of some, some sight, some lines to help you visualize, but basically drawing a crosshairs from corner to corner is gonna give you the proper center. And that's something you can kind of erase later or absorb into the drawing. Um, and what I'm going to do is, since this is a, the glass is a man-made symmetrical object, I'm going to draw a plumb line. Um, now, I've just had coffee, so my hands are a little shaky, but I'm going to try to draw, you know, more or less a straight line that's not too dark. It's just really to help me visualize how to draw this thing in. So something like that that you can either erase later or, or incorporate into the drawing. Now I'm going to check and see next what the, the narrowest part that's sitting on the red box, the width of it is, and I can see that one width of that is, find something that's close to that. And it's about the height of that brown box is very similar, if not exactly the same, as the width of that. So I'm gonna then go here and measure what I drew and take that, come over here and make some marks on either side of this uh, plumb line that I drew. And now I know that that is gonna be the, the width of that as it sits on the, the top. So the next thing I'll need to find is what the full height of that object is. And to do that, what I'll quickly do is measure, measure excuse me, the width compared to the height. And it looks like one of those widths, if I turn my hand then horizontally, it's about twice as high as it is wide. So I'll know if I take this width here and let's say the, the front of that glass is gonna line up about here, I can go take this measurement and go one, there's one width. And then, so I know the top of the glass is gonna fall somewhere around up here. So we're almost ready to, to, to block in that glass. We know these are called sort of organizational lines where you kind of draw these plumb lines and sort of visual sight lines. So you know roughly that glass is gonna fall in there except it's slightly angled, you'll notice, where the top of the glass is slightly wider than the bottom. So I'm gonna use that sighting technique to find the angle that's at. So it's like compared to the straight up and down that the edge of that red box is, 
that side of the glass, you can see slightly angled. So what I'll do is I'll try to hold, close my left eye, line that up on the edge of the glass, and then come over and try to line up that angle. So it's gonna be somewhere about like this, like the way that that angles down, something like that. And then the other side is going to duplicate it exactly since it's a, it's a man-made object. So it's gonna be symmetrical. So now what we have is we can get the structure of it, which is elliptical, which is, you know, ellipses are just, you know, if you were to look at this glass straight down, it would be round. And as you turn it in space, ellipses are basically circles in perspective. And to do that, start with the bottom, use the plumb line you drew that's in the center as a guide, as well as sort of the sides of the, uh, of the glass. And I can see that I'm, and, and with starting with, with making these kind of ellipses, they are the most sort of challenging thing to draw in a way because it, you need to get a little bit gestural. So to block them in to start, what I recommend is drawing from the shoulder, not the wrist, and kind of allow your, your shoulder to work like a hinge and almost guide you. So it's like your, your, if you work from your shoulder, it, your arm wants to make kind of marks like that. Your wrist doesn't as much, but if you work from the shoulder, it does. So you'll do the same up here. You find kind of, there's the top of the ellipse, the center. And I can see from the looking at the glass that it's kind of a skinny ellipse. You don't see that much of it because it's almost at your eye level, probably somewhere around here. So I'm just kind of going to eyeball where the other side of it would be. And then I'm going to try to use my shoulder as sort of like on a hinge almost so that it's trying to make that mark. And so just light, lightly do it. I'm doing it a little darker so you can see so that you can go in later and start making, you know, uh, corrections and adjustments. Um, and also as you're drawing, it's also helpful to kind of get a little bit in the next drawing that you'll be doing more probably next week, um, you're going to be making the a lot of what we're calling organizational lines. And so with that type of drawing, uh, you're gonna wanna draw somewhat transparently as if everything you're drawing is made out of glass basically, so that you get structure in the drawing. Um, so basically, those are the two things I would like you guys to keep in the back of your mind um, that I just it, it thought it would be easier to just talk to you guys directly where the sighting technique is for and it's important to remember your arm is extended fully um, but comfortably and your elbows locked. You have one eye closed and you use your thumb to measure. And then the second most useful um, uh, a way to use the sighting technique is finding those angles because those are going to be in almost all of your drawing this is going to be useful is finding w how those uh, objects are receding from you in space particularly anything that's square or rectangular or if you're drawing if you're out in public and you're drawing buildings like these type of measurements are extremely useful um, so let me just quickly switch the camera over.